everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Purview Days. Uh, uh, thanks for joining the session. And we will be talking about uh, Purview. Uh, it is heavy from my side. I uh, let me share my search screen. I hope everyone is able to see the screen now. OK, great. We are able to see the screen. Uh, let me sideline this recording. OK, so uh, let's talk about uh, Microsoft Purview Days. Uh, uh, there are this, we have exciting prizes, so please make sure you join the session and you answer it to get these prizes. Uh, we support a cause. Please be with us if you want to support the cause. We have details of donation at the bottom of the screen. And I would be taking the fourth session. Thanks for allowing me to give this session. Uh, it starts at 10.45 a.m. to 11.30. That's like 45 minutes for me. Uh, if, if I want to talk about myself, I work currently as a cloud architect uh, with Colin Fact Consulting. I have more than 15 years of experience and I'm currently located in Canada, Ontario, uh, working as an um, as a cloud architect for Colin Fi. Uh, I've worked for, on, on all the versions of SharePoint, Office 365. Uh, I worked on Office 365 when it was not even called Office 365. It was known as Office Live uh, back in 2006. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, let's first understand what is e-discovery. E-discovery or electronic discovery is a process of identifying and delivering electronic information that can be used as an evidence in legal cases. So we use e-discovery for a basic purpose of any kind of legal issues or legal matters that needs to be addressed. For example, if there's an uh, if there's any kind of uh, theft that has happened in the organization, or if there is any kind of uh, uh, a big claim that has come onto the organization that uh, organization people are not following best practices, or they are not following some specific practices, or if anyone else is not following uh, a particular uh, thing. Uh, which is as which is need to be governed as part of the organization and organization feels that you know it is just few set of people or it's a group of uh, or department that's not following it or something like that we need to make sure that uh, we we preserve those evidences we are able to take care of those uh, evidences we are able to search those evidences and uh, you know uh, preserve it as as and when needed so we go next. We'll talk about two, two versions of uh, actually there are three versions. We'll be talking mainly about two versions that is standard and premium. Standard is a very uh, basic version of it, which has three or four features in it. Like we'll you'll be able to see search, home, hold, export settings. Whereas in premium, you'll be able to see search, home, search, hold, preview, analytics, exports, and settings. Uh, so these are very basics, but uh, if I talk about premium, it, it helps to build on existing case management. So I'll show you how you can actually build on top of existing uh, case management. Uh, preservation searches, exports capabilities in e-discovery are very limited, whereas in, in premium version, it's, it's very extensive. It's a complete flow and uh, there are a lot of things which can happen. Like uh, in premium, you can actually go inside of every version of a document and find out if there is a particular word or particular sentence or you know talk about it which is not there in the standard which is not there with a lot of third party products that is there in the market so it's it's very critical that you not just look at uh, only one particular document which is live but you look at all the documents which are there uh, and all the versions of those documents, it's very critical, very important. We 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 should be able to look into it, and that was very recently introduced in in the premium version with e-discovery. If we talk about roles, there are basically two roles. One is a e-discovery manager, and one is e-discovery administrator. The basic difference is manager can do everything he wants to do with his own case, which means that he would be able to create a case and would be able to assign and search and perform hold, whereas administrator can do all the actions of a manager on his cases and on other manager cases, which means that he can manage his own cases as well as other cases, other managers cases as well. So that's the basic difference. That's the main difference. Others are because uh, things which I shared with you. What permissions licensing you need? 
to use eDiscovery Premium and Standard, you need one of the following license, which is eDiscovery 365, Microsoft 365, uh, eFi and Microsoft 365 E3 with advanced compliance add-on or Microsoft 365 eFi compliance add-on. Uh, if you talk about what is eDiscovery, the, the core source or the main so, uh, source of eDiscovery is Substrat. Uh, it's a very, very critical and a very core component of, of it. Not many people know about it. We can actually have a very deep dive session on Substrat itself. You know, if we get in time in future, we'll definitely talk about Substrat in future. Now, if we talk about creating uh, and uh, create a view cases in eDiscovery using PowerShell, for standard, uh, there are PowerShell commands. Like I've given PowerShell commands to view a uh, case, I've given PowerShell command to uh, view a new case, uh, create a new case, uh, create new. Uh, so if you if you create the same case uh, and you don't mention e-discovery, it's just going to create a, uh, if, if like if this, you use the same command with uh, the search and you don't mention this case, that means it's not going to create a case for you. Uh, it's not going to create a search. It's just going to create a search, but not a standard case for you. And it will not be part of this case. So this this case name is important if you want it to be part of the standard. You can run this command without, but that's going to be just a search. And we'll talk about why we need search, why we just need compliance search to be there, why we should be able to create a we should be able to just have compliance search in picture, you know, because that's it's, that's a first step. So if I talk about it, is it there are four steps to it? The first step is search. The second search is where we go to a little advanced, which is standard. The third and the fourth step is actually in the premium version of it, where actually you can do investigation, you can export, you can do tons of things out there, and that's a core uh, functionality of uh, e-discovery, I would say. Then once you create, you actually create a, uh, you start a search on a particular item which you create and you can get search results as to what's the status of that uh, compliance search. Uh, we have created this as in PowerShell. We should be able to run it and show it to you. Don't worry about it. it uh, we'll, we'll discuss about it. Uh, very important part uh, in, in, in standard, in previous versions, like about a couple of months back, I was able to export results using PowerShell, but that is not available now. It is it's not there now. Otherwise, it, it was one of the core features um, of being able to. And uh, if we talk about eDiscovery Premium, it's damn complex. It's very complex and you are not able to perform a lot of actions with PowerShell because of the complexity. So Microsoft has said we will not allow you a lot of partial commands to take actions. If you want to do anything, you have to come to the UI to do it. So the only two commands which I was able to do uh, utilize is to be able to get compliance case, uh, which is an advanced case. And if you want to actually go ahead and create a new compliance case, that's it. You are not able, uh, and there are a couple of other commands which I can actually share with you if you want to. If you want more information of that. I can you can connect with me. I'll share more, uh, more information about that. But um, if we talk about uh, compliance uh, search, yes, there is a lot of things which you would not be able to do. Uh, with uh, PowerShell, you really need to make sure that you are able to get the proper uh, UI to perform all those actions. OK. Now it's let's talk about eDiscover PowerShell demo. I would be going, showing you a demo or that will show you content search. The first thing which I talked about and the second thing is standard eDiscovery on how you can create uh, and manage a content search in a eDiscovery standard uh, case. So I'll just stop sharing for a minute and uh, I'll start. Uh, I I have uh, my own bots created in the system, so if you might be able to see things which are happening, uh, like my sis, my PowerShell talking to me, my other applications talking to me, so it's it's okay. You can you should be able to see those things. So, hi. Uh, okay, that's my PowerShell talking to me. I am 
and a mouse. Demo. We discussed. And uh, last week. Everyone is watching you. <laughs> OK, now we are in business. Let's do a thing. Are you ready? With the polish, you know. I still do right. Uh, okay, you have it already. Great. So, please, yes, please go ahead. Okay, so go to the PowerShell. Okay, it's running the script. Okay, it's it'll take some time to perform the search, you know, because uh, once the search has been executed, once the search is running in the background, it's actually gonna uh, take some time to show some result or actually at least perform some search in the background. As I said, it is needed. So, okay, how the uh, front during. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Okay. What does this happen? Okay, let's see when it is uh, detection rate on uh, my so give me to which give it all. Okay. Let's change. Okay, so let's see. Sorry, guys. Sorry to hear, dude. Okay. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Maybe after a demo. Demo kebab. Let's see. Uh, sorry for this interruption, guys. I was like, I'm, I'm talking with my bot, and I was like, uh, okay, this is the news to me. Uh, now let's go back to the yeah. The search is completed, and uh, now let's see. Uh, with the search, okay. Uh, we have the demo, and this is created, and we are able to see it. I'm able to see the search statistics. I think it's going to take some time for me to get the search statistics because this has started the search, so there are no items in it yet. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll give some more time for the search to get completed and show that. I know I don't want to want to purge. If you want this PowerShell on how you can run, uh, I can definitely share that with you. Uh, okay, let's see if if I'm if my PowerShell can actually f help us with a standard version of uh, aid discovery as well. Uh, can you create a new standard? A discovery. Yes. Uh, okay. Do it, dude. <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> Okay. Yes, let's do it. Okay, you have the script ready. That's good. Uh, okay, so you have run the script. We created it. That says demo search. Uh, demo me search me. Okay, let's see uh, what search was created. And uh, I go down. I see e discovery. I go to standard. And here I see demo search for me. 
that's good. And uh, okay, I go to search. Okay, search is created. It's going to take some time, as I said, uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. I think that should be it from you, PowerShell. That should be good for now. Thank you. OK. So let me stop sharing again. And uh, now we're going to. Uh, so now you were able to see uh, how using PowerShell we were able to finish these PowerShell scripts. Do let me know. I can definitely share these PowerShell scripts with you without any issues. And we can talk about these PowerShells in details. The commands that I executed, most of them are there in the PPT, which we'll be sharing with you. OK, now let's come back to the PPT and we'll talk about. Uh, We'll talk about e discovery advanced workflow. Now, what, what does e discovery advanced workflow has to offer us? e discovery advanced workflow has custodians, uh, custodians adding uh, custodians to the case. What are custodians, first of all? Custodians are the people or groups or mailboxes or places where the content is actually stored. They have the custody of the content. So the content is actually at that particular place or the mailbox or the SharePoint site. So those are called custodians. So they that's the content is with them. They own it. Uh, we collect relevant information from data sources. We can commit collections to a review set. Uh, I'll show you what commit means and what what do we talk about commit commits, and then we review and analyze data and review sets, and then we export and download case to the data. So now when we export and download, that's what goes to the code or that gets code. Uh, that gets going to the people who actually need to see this data as an evidence and take actions accordingly. So you know that's the uh, whole purpose of it. We'll 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 look into it shortly. So uh, now we're gonna uh, look at two demos right now. The first demo is gonna be e-discovery advanced, a whole search, and then we are also gonna look at e-discovery creation using API. Now again, there are very limited commands that are available in API because of the same reason it's very complex, very difficult to manage from PowerShell and API. So there are only specific actions that you can do right now. We'd already be looking at creation. OK, and we'll be using the graphs API, which is having the latest of all the commands. So let's go. Uh, uh, OK, I go back and we'll look at the demo right now. Uh, OK, now we are in the e-discovery center. Let me just first show you the e-discovery content search that we perform. The e-discovery content search that we performed uh, would have contents in it. These are e-discovery content searches that we had. And let me just click on the cricket one that, that I had created some time back because it is going to have some content because it is running from long. Yes, it does. It has 303 KB of data, some 1.8 MB of data and it has searched about 67 mailboxes so far. If I look at search statistics, I can definitely look at all the statistics that are there. Now, yeah, and if I look at all these, uh, if I want to look into it from more detail, like all the emails and everything, all the files would be loaded out here and I would be able to see them without any problems. This is going to take a little time. So I'm going to skip that for now, but we'll, we'll definitely show you if I want to look at what options I have. I have options to export results, copy search, delete, rerun search and edit search. Now this is the first step of our case. You know, if you're telling someone that there is a there is, let's say, a hacking event that has happened that I want to search for, or you know, there are people who are talking about cricket when I don't want people to talk about cricket in an office domain, like an email or something like that. I first need to identify whether really people are talking about it or it's just that I feel or someone else is trying to spread a rumor. So this search gives me an idea that people are really talking about cricket. Yes, there are related cricket related document uh, conversations that are happening in Teams, that are happening in email, that are happening in SharePoint. And now the investigation actually can go to the second step where we can say, you know, guys, there is something happening. There should be an investigation. 
So the search helps us with the first step, preliminary step. The second step is where we talk, where we actually go to the standard version of it actually. So uh, in standard version, you can create a little more number of cases. Uh, in premium right now, you're only able to create two cases because it's very complex. And all the cases that are there in uh, standard, you can actually go ahead and upgrade them to premium. So this is what I was talking about, that once you see that standard, is there and there are some things in standard you can actually upgrade to premium move this case to premium and make sure that you know there are you can actually use the advanced features or advanced things of uh, uh, e-discovery uh, so I'll, I'll go to wheels because I, I ran it a long time back and i should be able to see some contents in it let's see if there is any content uh, related to wheels uh, or let me just check Uh, OK, so yeah, this got created. I don't think so. We have any content because we ran it sometime back, so there's not much of content in it. I'll go to standard uh, premium version where we'll be actually creating a case and we'll have and I've actually created a case because it takes a lot of time for the search and a lot of other things to happen. I've created a case, so we'll talk. We'll uh, we'll we'll show you how to create a case and then I'll switch to this tennis case and we'll talk about what features are there which gets done after the case is created. So I create a case. Uh, OK, I don't have more than two cases. Uh, OK, this is strange. I have only one case and it's still not allowing me to create more cases. Uh, OK, first of all, uh, this option I would like you to everyone know. Uh, there's not much options out here. These these options were very recently added. But there's only one option that was here that was attorney client privilege. This is the only specific setting that you need to know about uh, where client attorney privilege can be on and uh, actions can be taken in it. So I go back and. Uh, uh, OK, now it's allowing me to create a case. Uh, I think it was not properly refreshed or something. Some problem was there. I create a case with name of cricket. OK, I say cricket. Uh, demo for. Thomas. days. And uh, if I want to give some kind of uh, number to it, now this number is nothing but is just a case number or uh, you know some kind of uh, things which is there. So I do not want to give any number. I just select next. Now the next is about members who would be the members of uh, who would be members of the team who would be looking into this case. So I can select, let's say Adeline is one of the member and actually I can even select a group which is a member. I do not want to select a group. I just selected as a user. Now it says reduce duplicate links. Uh, now this is where uh, some complexities gets there. Like what similar what you know if you have any similarities that you want to look at or minimum word count should be this or maximum word count should be this you know you know that's a conversation but I do not want it to be changed I would let it to be there uh, you can group item by theme let's say I say cricket and there's going to be any anyone talking about score anyone talking about foot uh, anyone talking about uh, penalty anyone talking about head trick you know these are like there's a theme we are talking about. If we talk about creating uh, create a saved query, uh, yeah, that can be performed. If uh, now let's say what is the text text to ignore? Uh, there's if there's any text that you need actually to be ignored or to be looked at, I say that's that's going to come here. I say let's say cricket. Actual text or expression and uh, I say text uh, uh, cricket for now and. Uh, uh, and uh, another very important thing, for example, you know, people try to say, you know, guys, you are, uh, you know, we want to trick our management by not actually talking about cricket in the chat, but we talk about, we take screenshots and we keep on posting the cricket screenshots. If you do that, then there's another feature which is OCR, optical character recognition, where if you put in a, if you put in an image, I can actually look at the image and figure out whether the word cricket is there in that image, whether the word score is there in the image. So I can actually, you cannot trick the system. You can definitely 
try, but you would not be able to trick the system with an OCR. OCR would be able to find the word cricket or would be able to find the word score or something like that. And then you're still stuck with the same kind of problem that you are in. So this is a summary of what I have uh, configured right now. And I select submit. And this is going to just do a basic uh, case creation and submission. Uh, advanced e-discovery is getting created. Uh, again, as I said, premium, you can only create two cases. And that is why I was getting the error in the initial phases, but now I just had to perform some refresh and it's, it's gone. Now, what options do I get? I get data sources. Data sources is where I can actually say who are the custodials, where the content actually is. I can select that. I can select uh, collections. Collections is uh, you know where I, what what kind of search queries are going to be performed. What what words I'm looking for. Uh, what specific things I'm looking for. So let me just uh, add. Let's see. Data sources is uh, who are the custodians. I'll say the custodians are. A, uh, it's going to come up. Let's see the first custodian can be this. The second uh, everything and then I select that the other custodian as uh, a. Uh, this. I guess it's taking time to get the results. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll go with just uh, the admin user for now. Uh, this user and what do you really want to put? Uh, you know, the content on hold. I said no, but I can actually even put it on hold. I'll show you about this hold in a few minutes. Like if there's any word or cricket or football or score, something like that is found, it should be able to put that on hold so that you know the person doesn't delete it. Because the person, the moment he gets to know there is some kind of search or investigation going on, he might delete it. So to prevent that, we can actually perform and hold. And then what we do is we review the current settings that is there and we submit it. Now this is where the custodian is created, who is having the custody of that content. Now we go to the collections. Collections is where we are going to look for what we are looking for. What is a search string? So this is where the search string started, where we started the search. Search is going to tell us, you know, whether what we are looking for is really there or not, or it's just that, you know, people are spreading lies. So I say, well, you know, look out for the word cricket and uh, I select what are the custodians that I have. This is a custodian I have in this case. And if there's any non custodians that I want, uh, you know, non custodians are people who I feel that might be there, that might be involved, not something I want an investigation on. But so it's like, okay, there's no no custodians. And I, if you want additional locations, I can say also look for everywhere else. I just select all the sites, all the public folders everywhere. Just search for the word cricket. What word I'm looking for? I'm looking for the word cricket. I'm looking for the keywords that says operator is equal to word cricket. And that's it. I am looking for this word cricket. I can actually expand this to look for other words and other complex uh, parameters. I'm just going to look for this. And if you want, if you ever know about KQL, you can actually use the KQL language as well. I hit submit and uh, that's done and review is done. Uh, collection is created. The next is about review set. So whatever data that gets done in the collection, I have to make sure that I actually once I'm this is not showing any data, but once I, it's it has the data, it's processing right now. Once it has data, it will allow me to go to review sets. And then we also have communications. Uh, so review sets and communication will look at the existing case which I've created. So let's go there. I go to tennis. And uh, over here I can see I have three data sources right now with me. Joni, Debra and uh, CDX the same. I have created collection and over here I can see uh, there are 
there is content that has been found and I want if you want to perform a review of the sample of whatever I was found, I can just click on review and this is all the documents and emails and everything else between them and I can even view them. I'll show you about viewing them a little uh, separately because I, I have a separate option, but once you get out here, the most important thing that people will miss is that you have to go here and you have to perform an action that says commit. Once you commit it, only that uh, that commit will actually move this data to review sets. Unless you have committed the collection, it will not go to the review set. So you have to make sure that you commit the searches. The search results that has been found for it to go to. If you want to see the data sources, this is going to be data sources, search statistics and collections. This is something that we've already looked at in the standard version. So I'll go to review sets, the most important part. Now review sets is where a lot of magic happens. So in this review set, I, I'll open the review set. This is the most important part, OK, because what's going to happen out here is this is where the actual evidence collection process happens. I see here that there's an email that says cricket. I just go here. I say annotate. OK, I can annotate it. I can just, you know, make sure that, OK, this particular cricket conversation should have a red mark and here. This this is this is incorrect. You should not have this word here. You are talking about cricket. That should not be your email communication at all. I've marked it. Now I know that when if I have to open it, I can just keep on opening these things and I can actually make sure that you know the words that uh, this is where I've marked content which should be uh, which should be shown. I can select text and I can actually annotate uh, the selections. I can like there are a lot of other things which I can do. If I want to delete it, I can delete it. I can change it. I can do a lot of things with it. So uh, this is basically, you know, what the investigation things can happen. At this level, you can have uh, area radiation. So, so this is like uh, retract, retracted. So, you know, I just make sure that okay, no, I'm hiding that particular part of it. It should not be available, but everything else in this email should be available. So these options are very critical for any kind of investigation for us to be taken forward. And that's what all these data, you know, I, I, I can actually uh export the information and actually i can tag that information as i want to and uh, uh once all this tagging and, and this thing is done i can actually go ahead and uh export all these results to make sure that this can be presented in the court of law or any kind of legal dispute or discussion that we want to take into uh, definitely you can look in for words, you can look in for dates, you can look in for subjects and other things. Uh, these are always available. I'll come out of uh, review sets. Again, creation of review sets can take some time. It's not a very easy and a small process. And uh, that's why I had to do it in advance for this demo. Uh, talk about communications a little. Communications is where we are able to actually, you know, uh, this is legally required. If we are in specific countries like Ireland has this law that if you're performing an investigation on someone, you need to inform them there is an investigation uh, happening on them and what kind of content you're looking at, what you're looking at. So over here, you know, uh, there's an acknowledgement that the uh, 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 portal that actually tells you that, okay, you know, uh, there's an uh, there is an acknowledgement that uh, you know we uh, we can type in an email and send it to the people who have the content that do there's something that's happening you need to acknowledge that you have read this email there's a portal link that will be given to you where you can go to the portal and look into a couple of things and who's the issuing officer issuing date couple of other things that can be put in and uh, so there would be three different sections the issuance when the issue is actually happening you know you found something and there's an issue and then there's a reissue when you actually you found uh, again something which is different and then there's another release that you know whatever was issued and locked not has been released so you can let them know that okay that content has been released so all this is available and this is going to happen so and editing see uh, some other notifications if you want to send some reminders some escalations 
and who are the custodians you uh, this this will get applied to so you can also review this options that are there if and, and i talked about hold you know so all the option all the things that get searched also get onto hold uh, and you're not able to perform uh, you know you can't delete it you can't do anything about it then after that because it's on hold and hold content is very very critical because once the content is on hold you cannot perform a lot of actions on it and it's uh, you know because there should not be any change delete forwarding something like happening over there you can forward and read and do that thing but you cannot delete it that's the most important part and then there's processing if you have any you know you want to update the indexes you want to make sure that the researching hap should happen you can have this processing there's another exports that are like if i have performed any export will give me details uh, there are jobs which are running. We can look at all the jobs that are running and then we have settings that we discussed. The settings are more related to searches, accesses, cases. And if I want to ever delete a case, I have to go over here and I have to make sure I delete a case, but it will not allow me to go delete a case directly. It will say that I have to close the case. I have to release the hold and I have to do all those things to uh, delete it, but I'm, I can't do it because it's going to take good amount of time for all of that thing to happen. So uh, that's basically what we have in terms of how a uh, whole of e discovery uh, this case can be created. Let's look at how you can do it. Do a lot of things from uh, API. This is uh, the URL developer.microsoft.com slash you graphs graphs explorer. I look for e discovery and I go to e discovery cases. It will not it will not give me anything unless I sign in. So I performed a sign in action on the right hand side. After that, the next is I get this access token. I have to once this access token is there, I am able to perform most of the action. So let's say I do e discovery. Uh, search and I say, OK, show me all the e discovery cases that are there. So it's going to make sure that my e discovery cases come up. So what the e discovery cases I have, I have cricket and I have tennis. These are two e discovery cases. Now this is working on the advanced version of e discovery. This is not working on the standard or other. So this is really giving me all the details. And if I want to get the cases and other details, but how do I create a new one? So for that, this is this is an option. I say, OK, I uh, rediscovery case created from Graph Explorer today for MS Perview. And I just uh, perform a run and this is the trick. Not everyone knows about it, but because I'm running it from the uh back end or uh, from the api you remember we were not able to create the third premium case but now we have the third case created this is very interesting very important that you are able to create a third case from the back end very critical <laughs> very funny but yeah i think microsoft did not found out so if you want to create a case and utilize it and you want to do it from graphs to it and maybe you can skip the Microsoft limit uh, until Microsoft finds out about this. OK, so that's it for uh, as part of the demo. Uh, I'll switch back to the slides. Uh, these are some resources now when very important resource I would like you to look at. Uh, this is my site about deleting items from preservation hold. Now this happened with one of my customer where we had some hold applied on them. And even though I had an hold applied on them, they were not able to, uh, even though I had released the hold, they were not able to uh, look into it. They were not able to delete the content. So I was like, what's happening? It took me a good amount of time and I figured out that the problem was that even though the release has been done, but uh, there are some uh, the release doesn't happen properly in the background. So I wrote an article so that people can know how what what is need to be done. So they have to go ahead and you have to search for this in the search uh, like in your. Uh, uh, search admin center and then over there you put in the URL and you put in this uh, uh, diagnostics you need to run and after your uh, uh, diagnostics is done you will get this error me uh, message that removal of invalid retention on the site has been completed so you know that that retention that hole that was there that has been removed it has been deleted and after this 
has been done, then you are able to perform the delete action. So previously I was getting this error message and after that I was not getting any error message, I was able to delete the content without any problem. So just for your information, if you need uh, anything, uh, this might happen with email, this might happen with other things as well. So I've put in that as an article. Uh, please feel free to look into this. Uh, a lot of uh, resources are available. Thanks a lot from my side. And uh, next session would be from Samik Roy. Thanks everyone. Bye.